starts Friday, October 9th. Micro sponges are popping up in a wide array of products. Makeup foundations, baby wipes, even lipstick that re-moisturizes every time you pucker. Okay, you say, so it'll do stairs. Let me tell you about this chair. Inside here are six sensors, four motors, four batteries, two computers, two actuators. James Bond would be proud to drive this thing. When you use the pen, whatever you write, or print, or draw onto the computer's pad, the computer recognizes, cleans up, and then enters into its database. The camcorder has stopped being just an electronic brownie, something to record the family vacation to Disney World. No, you can do everything Spielberg can do now. You want sound effects? There's a box for it. Hello, I'm Richard Hart, and this is the next step in technology. So, your chewing gum lose its flavor, your lipstick lose its color, or maybe your shoes lose their freshness. The answer to all of this might be a new sponge, a tiny little sponge that happens to work very well under pressure. These are micro sponges. Each tablet contains millions of synthetic spheres that can absorb virtually any liquid and turn into a dry powder. That powder can then in turn be mixed with creams, oils, or lotions and programmed to release cosmetic or pharmaceutical agents in response to pressure, time, or temperature. They're the brainchild of Sergio Nacht of Advanced Polymer Systems of Redwood City, California. Micro sponges are a result of the cosmetic industry's search for a way to keep from dumping chemicals onto the skin all at once. It's like if I took these and miniaturized it 5,000 times. And it would create a powder-like material that looks and feels like talcum powder. And yet it delivers the material that we load into the microscopic sponge when I put it on the skin. Micro sponges are popping up in a wide array of products. Makeup foundations, baby wipes, even lipstick that re-moisturizes every time you pucker. One of the most beneficial, depending on where you stand, is this micro sponge foot powder. It contains one to rid the shoe of existing odors, one for new odors, a fragrance, a cooling ingredient, and an anti-friction compound. This should be standard issue in every locker room in the country. The micro sponge's most promising application to date might be in the prevention of the more than one half million cases of skin cancer diagnosed each year. Blacks in Africa don't have skin cancer. Why is that? Well, it's very simple because the pigment that we make in our skin when we suntan is a protective barrier. And that pigment is called melanin. Synthetic melanin, the dark pigment our skin manufactures when exposed to ultraviolet rays, can be absorbed by micro sponges, mixed with a cream and rubbed into the skin. It's an instant suntan that's also a sunscreen. It's already available in Europe and should be on shelves in North America soon, pending FDA approval. The next step for micro sponges is already in the works. Chewing gum that never wears out, not even on the bedpost overnight. Next up, making movies with the latest in home video. Cut. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. I don't believe it. And a very personal computer, minus the keyboard. Brought to you in part by Audi.
to drive it is to take control. These 400 men are trained to operate deep behind enemy lines, and they're given two extremes. Somebody they've got to put away, and the people they've got to save. Meet the Norwegian Jaegers on World of Valor. Then at 8.30, a race against death. What does it take to be a hero? I just thank him so much. Ordinary people tell extraordinary stories on Heart of Courage. Thursday, beginning at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Today's camcorders have shutters and filters and features found a few years ago only on professional cameras. You can buy a wireless microphone for around $100. And with new products such as Nutex Video Toaster, you can make almost every special effect you find on network television. All of this has led to a boom in clubs that make movies. Camcorder has stopped being just an electronic brownie, something to record the family vacation to Disney World. No, you can do everything Spielberg can do now. You want sound effects? There's a box for it. You want to do wipes, fades, and dissolves? That's here, too. How about graphics? How about your own titles? It's all Hollywood at home. Next thing you know, Grandma will be calling saying, let's do lunch. All of this has spawned a new phenomenon, the homemade movie company. No, no, not the baby on the lawn type. We mean mini MGMs, back lots, springing up in backyards all across America. This is the Peninsula Movie Makers Group of Northern California. They're taping their latest epic, Deer Hunter. Uh, not quite the Michael Cimino, Robert De Niro version. It's true, the hottest directors in Hollywood today are women. Think of Barbara Streisand, Penny Marshall, Jodie Foster, and now, Ora May Sedlicek. Are you ready? Yep. Action! Ora May and her husband Bill are ramrodding the cast to come in on a three-hour shoot schedule and under a budget in the low 20s. That's $20. Cut! Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. I don't believe it. Let me see what you're seeing. How's oh, that? You haven't got his feet. In their 53 years of amateur movie making, they've racked up an impressive track record of 100 no-budget flicks, all made with off-the-shelf equipment you can buy at your local video store. Oh, I haven't got any sound on. What are you talking about? No sound? No. Well, what do you think we've been shooting? Oh, jeez. We've been taking movies since 1939. But then we started taking uh, Baby on the Lawn things, and then we started making little stories, and we found our family liked to, in, uh, to uh, join in and do stories. I am a freight engine. I have just pulled a big train loaded with machines. The couple, retired and married 56 years, estimate they've invested ten to $15,000 in equipment. Everything from graphic generators to title makers to the latest digital editing gear. Yet there are still some basics that all Nuevo filmmakers need to learn. Beginning with... Forget this uh, button that zooms in and zooms out, which will turn your stomach if you don't watch yourself. <laughs> Most amateurs have a problem they have is sound. They, uh, they do not have good sound. They have ambient sound and weak sound or low volume sound. The video boom has made available to the amateur near professional quality gear, such as sound effects boxes, graphics generators, digital titlers, and even this junior steady cam that allows handheld camera moves that look like expensive Hollywood dolly shots. But above all, Bill and Aura emphasize movie making is still a tough business. The final advice would be be sure to have fun and stay uh, stay married. <laughs> <laughs> now you can even buy an artificial camera operator. Let's say your friend is sick or you can't afford to hire somebody to operate it. You could always do a one-person video show with this. It's called In the Picture. This bar has pickups that sense the sonar transmitter on my belt, and I can walk anywhere within 360 degrees 35 feet away, and it'll follow me. It has a motion control sensor inside, 
which also can be adjusted for speed and for smoothness. What can you use it for? Some people use it to record themselves giving a lecture, maybe practicing tennis, or even that new roller skating routine you're working on. What's great is for just a little over 200 bucks, you have a camera operator who never requires lunch, never misses a shot, and never argues. These are the first pictures Julia's dad took of her when he got his new camcorder. David Gauger is an amateur. His camera cost a few hundred dollars. Don Ford is a pro. His camera costs tens of thousands of dollars. Through their lenses, we'll see some of the do's and don'ts of the video world. First, don't depend on the technology of autofocus. The first thing that will improve your shooting right off the bat, make the biggest, most dramatic improvement, will be to turn that automatic focus circuit off. When David photographed his daughter on this swing, the automatic system failed to keep up with the changing distance. The proper way to focus a zoom lens is to zoom all the way in, as tight as you can, find the focus, and then zoom out. Whenever you zoom anywhere in that range now, it'll always remain in focus. But don't overdo the zoom. That's the second biggest sin of the amateur. Do a wide shot first. Then if you move in physically to shoot a close shot instead of zooming, it'll look more professional. The final rule is so simple it seems silly. Hold still. Beginners tend to cut to this or cut to that too often and too soon. The camera is never held on any one thing long enough for the audience to focus on. It. So once again, don't rely on that autofocus. Don't get zoom happy. Hold every shot steady and hold it for a few seconds longer than you think you should. Oh, and one more thing. Make sure the camera is running. Most consumers lack equipment and skills to edit their tapes after they shoot. So the solution is to edit first or edit while you shoot. Here's an example. You could shoot a picture like this, move in, and start your camera again later. But see what happened? To the viewer, it seemed the hat jumped off the baby's head. Heck, the baby's confused. That's why professionals call it a jump cut. It's a bad edit. How to avoid it? Professional photographer Don Ford is going to set up his camera ahead of the three and have them walk toward him. He will let them walk past him without keeping them in the picture, as most amateurs would do. He lets them leave. Then he runs across the street ahead of them and sets up once again, this time to see them step off the curb. This is how the two scenes look together. It won't necessarily be a jump cut. That's the surest way to avoid a jarring, what was that scene change effect when you go home. Remember how Pro Ford let his subjects go out of sight? That's called letting your subject leave the picture frame or just Great. leave the frame. Now we'll go to the playground. Here he will coach David as David makes use of this technique to capture his wife Lisa giving daughter Julia a ride on the carousel. Hey, wait till they leave. Don't follow them. Okay, follow her, follow her. Now pick her up, Lisa. Alright, now I'll walk out of frame go this way. Instant replay. Watch through David's lens. First, there is no baby. Can get her out. Now there is a baby. And finally, there is no baby much more professional. And it's done well enough, you don't have to do any edit editing at all. Just run the raw type. Next up, climbing to the stars in high-tech wheelchairs. Bifocals? I'm gonna look just like my father. My grandfather. Wait. Nobody will notice the lines if I do some cool frames or something. This is not working. For those who refuse to be seen in bifocals, we offer the perfect disguise. Verilux No-Line Bifocals. The vision you need, the look you want, none of the lines. Call for a Verilux professional near you. would have you believe that total isolation from the road is the ultimate luxury. But the Acura legend was designed for a very different type of driver. One who believes that if a luxury car completely isolates you from the driving experience, it isn't really a driving experience.
There are a lot of smart reasons to fly for the American Express card. Just call the number below. And then a canceled flight won't leave you stranded. I can't believe they canceled our flight. <laughs> It'll be fine. This is a great day. It's a beautiful drive. Because unlike a bank card, the American Express card has no preset spending limit. You can apply right over the phone. With the American Express card, you're in control. You pay your bill in full. There's no revolving debt, no outrageous interest. You stay out of that trap. So call the number below. You can apply right over the phone. I still don't know where I lost that wallet. My whole life was in it. Pictures, license. So we're on bread and water? No. New card. If you ever lose the card or it's stolen, you can get a replacement in 24 hours. Don't delay. Call the number below and apply now. Wheelchairs can do a lot for people who can't walk, as long as the world is flat. This used to be where the world stopped for anybody in a wheelchair. One thing about being disabled is that one the, it takes the spontaneity out of life. There's lots of barriers and accessibility problems for people in, in wheelchairs. Traveling in a normal wheelchair, hitting a set of stairs is like hitting a wall. However, a set of stairs becomes just a driveway to this chair. This is the Access wheelchair, built by Quest Corporation in Sunnyvale, California. Quest President Tony Castagna says it's the only commercially built wheelchair in the world that can climb or descend stairs. It's, in effect, a robot. It's the most sophisticated robotic platform in the world. Four-wheel disc brakes, zero to six in 1.8 seconds, three-eighths horsepower. The Access is a mechanical mountain goat capable of tackling inclines up to 34 degrees. It won't allow the driver to steer into a bad angle or onto stairs that are too steep. Okay, you say, so it'll do stairs. Let me tell you about this chair. Inside here are six sensors, four motors, four batteries, two computers, two actuators. James Bond would be proud to drive this thing. Whenever you need to climb or descend, just lower the treads. The wheelchair then tips your seat backward to center your weight and cradle you. Then the Access's sensors guide it forward and downward. Or backward and upward. The chair sees with four eyes, two in the back and two in the front. If you were to look under the front here, you would see two of these. Sonar detectors, they send sound waves bouncing off of anything in front of it. Now, if there's a stair here, it can tell how far down, what angle, and if there is no stair, it simply refuses to go forward. It's amazing to me how the types and the configurations of stairs that it can climb and descend. The chair takes over. It, has, it, makes, it controls the ascent and descent. Helen Jones has been disabled since a skiing accident more than 30 years ago. She admits it takes a little courage to let a machine take over and carry her up or down a steep set of steps, especially the first time. Of course. <laughs> yes, my stomach was, um, you know, in knots. Another access feature Helen has come to appreciate. For years I've been looking at belly buttons. <laughs> really, literally. And backsides. But a motor under the seat can raise Helen as much as six inches, allowing her to reach objects and level the conversational playing field. Now I can, you know, raise myself and look at people in the eye. The access costs about $20,000 and requires a doctor's prescription. The federal government considers it a medical device. The four lead-acid batteries can be recharged at any wall outlet and are good for several days' use before needing a recharge. And no matter where the chair is, it can be connected to a telephone, and a technician far away can use a computer to inspect its motors, analyze the inclinometer, which measures how level the chair is, and test the sonars. And coming soon, the access chair will be able to basically control the environment in which the chair operates, dial a telephone remotely, uh, open doors, switch on lights, electrical appliances, TVs, whatever even monitor its driver's medical condition and update a doctor over the phone. For people like Helen Jones, the access chair, though expensive, has literally carried her to new heights. In Helen's case, the steepest stairs on the college campus where she works. 
Mount Everest. <laughs> it's the Mount Everest of the Enza College because it has the most steps and they're quite steep. I think there were 16 steps. And I, I climbed them today and I came back down. And it was uh, an exciting feeling. And I think having done that, I can do anything. Next up, is the pen mightier than the keyboard? This portion of Discovery is sponsored in part by Verilux No-Line Bifocals. Bifocals? I'm going to look just like my father. My grandfather. Wait, nobody will notice the lines if I do some cool frames. Or something. This is not working. For those who refuse to be seen in bifocals, we offer the perfect disguise. Verilux No-Line Bifocals. The vision you need, the look you want. None of the lines. Call for a Verilux professional near you. Come on, let me immortalize you. Kiss off. Leon Bernstein takes the pictures. They ain't looking at best, all right? That no one else can get. I killed him to get the picture. <laughs> now. I need to ask you a favor. He's about to get the one shot. You need a favor from me? That could cost him everything. To war, Artie. You're out of your league here, Bernstein. Please say yes. Joe Pesci is the public eye. Rated R. October 14th in select areas. October 16th everywhere. There's some big news in biscuits. Presenting Grand's Biscuits, our biggest biscuits ever. Big? Why, they're huge! Big, delicious buttermilk biscuits made from a rich home-style recipe that uses real buttermilk for a taste that's fluffy and light. Nothing's as loving like my Grand's biscuits. <laughs> Dwarfed by mountainous glaciers, working in sub-zero temperatures, one family attempts to befriend the Arctic's most fearsome scavenger. Don't miss their Arctic Odyssey on Challenge, Saturday at 8 Eastern, only on the Discovery Channel. Apple Computer is predicting that by the middle of this decade, we will be trading in our cellular phones and computers for little personal assistance that will fit in the pocket and not require a keyboard. That's good news for those of us who never learned to type. But for computers, it means they'll have to learn to deal with this. Computing is the most exciting new technology since the introduction of the PC itself. The idea is to have uh, the ability to write however you, however you naturally write. It's going to broaden the market and empower people and allow them to become computer users where previously uh, they may have found the technology inaccessible. When most of us want to make a note of something, we still write it down. We don't use a keyboard to type it in. And writing is what's behind a new generation of PCs. They're called pen-based computers. Now, the pen doesn't have any ink. It's just something you use to press on a pad to complete an electrical connection. This machine works the way they do. They don't have to learn how the machine works. When you use the pen, whatever you write, or print, or draw onto the computer's pad, the computer recognizes, cleans up, and then enters into its database. At least one computer can even read Chinese characters. The computer figures out what you've written down by doing two things. The first is what we call feature extraction, which is a pretty standard way of, of uh, getting uh, features of a particular letter. In other words, the computer looks at the bends and angles and other features of your scribble and then compares them to the bends and angles of the characters in its memory. As the computer is processing the individual letters, it also looks for the word those letters might spell. Dictionary-aided recognition. For example, if it thinks you've written down the letters N, E, X, and T, and it also has that letter combination in its internal dictionary, then it figures you've probably written down the word next. Right now, most pen-based computers are still pretty slow. And although they're supposed to recognize anybody's mm -hmm. handwriting, a mere space out of place can slow up the yeah. pace. Yeah. Close. So you really have to separate your words. Just, okay. just far enough that the system's trying to read it as separate words. Okay. We have a long way to go, and I suspect that a couple years from now, if we come back here, that we'll see uh, astounding pen computers and software that will do things that we, we don't even dream of today.
Even so, today you can already use a pen-based computer to inventory a lumber yard, or whip up a quick architectural sketch, or even scribble a few notes during a business meeting. You don't carry a laptop into a conference room and be clicking away, you know, during a meeting. And guess what? This is one technology where the United States is well ahead of Japan. And this is one pen-based computer that's at the head of the pack. Apple's Newton. Yep, try one of these and you'll think a pen-based computer is more... A reinvention of the notepad. It's a completely different type of thing. The Newton is compact, fast, and definitely sexy. And it has sound effects of the old-fashioned things it's replacing. For example, your old desktop Rolodex. Press on one of those phone numbers and Newton will dial it for you. Or check the metro system if you're visiting Paris or draw out a quick map or a note to fax to somebody, even order a pizza. And portable handheld pen computers like the Newton will become even more powerful once the new National Wireless Communications Network is in place a few years from now. By the end of this decade, the information, the personal information that's inside your Newton device will be able to communicate with other electronic devices which have Newton technology. So it will, for instance, know when you're in Chicago to give you the Chicago weather forecast, which will get to you wirelessly. And if you can imagine people walking around cities and, and uh, with uh, wireless communications to anywhere, they can get information from anywhere, they can receive messages from anywhere. It's a tremendously powerful uh, opportunity, I think. Something we can't show you on television is what it feels like to use one of these new pen-based computers. So take a pen and try to write on a window or some other glass object. Notice how unnatural it feels? It's kind of hard to hold the pen. That's one of the problems with the new pen tutors. Nobody yet has devised artificial paper. That's it until the next step. I'm Richard Hart. Thanks for joining us. Did you get it? Uh, I wanted his feet now. Did you get him? Yeah, I followed his feet right down to the ground. And he's rubbing his feet? Did he rub his feet? Yeah, he rubbed his feet. I don't think he did. I think we've got to take that one over. Okay, let's try it again. Let me unpack it, fellas. I packed it. There's a rifle. There's your, your rifle. Here's a... Mount. Oh, okay. uh, here, I'll take that. Okay. Let me get this for you. Oh. Let's go. You gave me that. Here. Well, hold the monitor. Jeez. All right. I got the camera equipment. There's the camera. I got my uh, monitor ready to go. Well, if you've got a lot of batteries, that's the thing I always worry about. Yeah. Okay, actors arrive. Come on in. Wave them in. Come on in, fellas. Real Adventure, the Discovery Channel. It's your world. Hi, I'm Henry Tenenbaum. Welcome to Beyond 2000. How would you like to strap a contraption on your back that sends...